Welcome to Electra Online. There is nothing like a good numerical example that's simple and straightforward to help us understand how a Kalman filter works. So here we have an example where we're trying to find what the true temperature is. We're trying to estimate as much as possible. We have an initial estimate, could be anything, but we, let's put it at 68. And let's say that the initial error in the estimate is equal to 2, which in other words, my estimate could be anywhere between 66 and 70. The initial measurement, let's say we take initial value with a certain thermometer, it's not so accurate, it gives a value for 70, of 75, and we know that the error in the measurement can be as high as 4, but in other words, plus or minus 4, that means that the true value lies somewhere between 79 and 71. So how does Kalman filtering help us determine a good estimate for the temperature? Well, let's go through the first set of calculations. First of all, we're going to calculate the Kalman gain. It's the ratio of the error in the estimate divided by the sum of the error in the estimate plus the error in the measurement. Now, if we haven't gotten any initial calculations yet, we can find the initial values. So the error in the estimate is going to be our initial estimate error right there. So that's going to be equal to 2 divided by the error in the estimate, which is 2, plus the error in the measured value, which is 4 which is equal to 2 divided by 6, which is 1 divided by 3, which is equal to 0 0.33, which means the Kalman gain starting out on our first calculation is 0.33. The next thing we're going to do is calculate the current estimate based upon the previous estimate. Now, the previous estimate is going to be the initial estimate that we have. So in this case, that is going to be equal to 68 plus the Kalman gain, which we calculated in the previous calculation, 0 0.33, times the difference between the measured value and the previous estimate. In this case, that's going to be our initial estimate. So the measured value was 75 minus the old estimate or the initial estimate of 68. So this is going to be equal to 68 plus one third or 0 0.33 times the difference between these two, which would be seven. All right, for that we need a calculator. We usually keep about two decimal places. So we go um, 7 divided by 3. That gives us 2.33 added to 68, which gives us 70.33. So there we have our new estimate. Notice that we close the gap between the original estimate and the actual value very quickly. We're down to less than half of what's remaining. The next thing we want to do is now recalculate or come up with a new error in the estimate. Remember that our previous error was 2. Our new error is going to be smaller. So this is going to be 1 minus the Kalman gain. So in this case, it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.33 uh, multiplied times the previous estimate, which is 2. So remember that was 1 third. That will give us uh, 1 minus... Uh, 0.3333 equals multiply times 2 and we get 1.33 so the new error in the estimate is 1.33 and so we would we would then use the current estimate and the updated error to then go through a second iteration and do this again as soon as we get a new measured value so the next thing we want to do is look for the next measured value assuming that the error in the, in the measurement will still be 4. The error usually doesn't change in the measurement unless the conditions change under which the measurement was taken. And so we would take a new measurement. We would then plug that into our Kalman gain equation, come up with a new Kalman gain. From that, come up with a current estimate, an updated estimate, and from that, update the error in the estimate. And we just keep doing that over and over again until we feel that the estimate gets to be very close to the true value. How do we know that the estimate gets to be very close to the true value? When the variations in the estimate become very small, we must be zeroing in on the true value, and that's how we know. In the next video, we'll go through a whole series of these calculations to see how they will then slowly get to the actual value. Actually, I shouldn't say slowly, because the common filter is a method to get, get to there actually quite quickly. So let's take a look at the next video and see how quickly we actually zero in to the true value.